Hello, how are y'all tonight? Uh, this is Katie, and if I haven't met you before, um, I own a DIY studio um, located in Northwest Arkansas, and tonight I'm going to show you some fun fall decor. So I know it's debatable whether we should start decorating for fall just yet or not, but I'm doing it. It's September 1st, and it's game on for fall, I decided. So we hopefully have a few of you popping in. I see Kara there. Hi, Kara. <laughs> so y'all, as you're coming in, if you want to tell me when you're going to decorate for fall, okay? We polled and everybody said they like to decorate for fall. They like to decorate for Halloween and Thanksgiving. So when do you start that seasonal decorating? So you guys chime in and let me know. <laughs> I see ya. <laughs> Jamie is saying she can't wait to see what I'm doing with the pumpkins. So if you follow us over on Instagram, um, I like to do little stories there. And um, I showed some styrofoam pumpkins or foam pumpkins from the dollar store, like from Dollar Tree, because we don't have dollars. We don't have Dollar Trees here, and I actually happen to be out of town, and that's where I got them. Um, but they're very ugly, and I'll show you them, and we'll try to make them pretty. <laughs> We'll see what we can do. I'm like a hot mess. Y'all see this? Like I was staining outside. So I'm going to show you the project that I'm going to be working on. And um, I didn't wear gloves. I'm a really impatient crafter. And so now I'm going to be paying for that because I'm going to be nasty all day. <laughs> I'm getting thumbs up for that. I don't know if that's <laughs> you guys are impatient crafters as well, perhaps. Huh? <laughs> okay. So I went ahead and stained this. Here's what we got here. Okay. This is one of our big centerpiece troughs. So um, I went ahead and pre-stained it, and then I'm going to do some white dry brushing on it. You could totally leave it this color. I happen to have um, a really dark tabletop, so I thought it would look better if I whitewashed mine. It would stand out a little more. Although I will use table runners, probably, probably some sort of burlap table runner for fall. Um, but we're just going to go with that. Hi, Jennifer. I see you popping in. Hello, Kelsey. How are you? Is everybody ready for Labor Day weekend? Three days? Yeah. Okay, ladies, my question of the day was when do you start decorating for fall? So is everybody September 1st? You don't have a real day? Do you wait till October? When are you busting out the pumpkins around your house? I was thinking, I'm going to show you when I decorate this. I'm going to show you a way you could use it like if you just like farmhouse vibe decorating that's really just soft and nice, neutral. And then I'm going to show you how you can like layer in the pumpkins when it's officially time to break those out, okay? I know we had a few like chilly mornings here in Northwest Arkansas and it's felt like fall. It's like teasing fall, you know, and we had our first hog football game was last night. So that's fall. Football means fall, right? <laughs> Cassie says she's decorating today. Perfect timing. Megan says September's fair game as well. So she's validating that I can be decorating. It's September. Um, and my husband is actually out of town, so he has no say. Not that he really cares. <laughs> He doesn't care too much. He lets me decorate pretty much. Um, okay, so we're going to start with the centerpiece trough. So if you just hopped in, this is what I'm showing. Um, I actually have one of these, but I just wanted to show you really quickly um, how you could do this for your own house. This is a really simple build, um, and I may even link to, to something um, on Pinterest for sure. It's like five pieces of wood. Um, you could probably even glue them if you're not very tool savvy. Um, but if you have a nail gun or a staple gun, Totally tackle this at home, girls, okay? It's all straight cut, slap it together. It needs to be rustic anyway. Or um, come see us at Vintage Market Days if you're local. Or if you have any uh, vintage market, flea markets, that kind of thing, um, you can pick one up, I'm sure, there. And um, the dough bowls are also really cool. I saw a lot of those in flea markets and at different markets I've been in. That would be super for fall. So just something wooden and rustic is what I'm going to go with for my centerpiece for fall. So first things first, I'm going to find my white paint that was just right here. Hang on. Behind the camera. Hold on. And I'm wearing a white shirt too. We'll see how this this goes for me, right? <laughs> so, okay. So I mixed up some BB Froche um, chalk paint. So this hopefully will dry really quickly, and we can move on with our tutorial, that kind of thing. I'm gonna aim down here so you can guys kind of see what I'm talking when I'm talking dry brushing. Okay. So this is the centerpiece trough. Here's the edge I'm gonna work on. What I usually do is go ahead and dip my brush in the paint, and I'm kind of wiping off in there, and then I even have a little plate over here I'm going to take off a little more, okay? And when I dry brush, I try to stick all one direction, 
and just kind of long sweeping strokes. You don't really want to like have a heavy brush stroke where you start in the middle. So if you can start at the end and blend it as far as that paint on your brush will go. And you can always add more, but it's harder to take it off. So just a little bit at a time. Okay. So I can decide how white I'm going to go. And this would be cute colors. I just think these are neutral because you can fill them with different things every season. So I just try to keep my little troughs neutral. Does this scare you guys just slapping on paint? I can't quite see the, any comments down there. So, whoa! I flung a little white paint. At least it matches my shirt, huh? Okay. Alrighty. I'm going to show you that. I'm going to come up here. Hi, girl, so I can see comments. Hi. Okay, ladies. So I kind of did that one edge, and I'm going to work on the top here. I don't even think I'm going to paint the middle since I'm going to have um, my florals and stuff in there. So I was thinking there's a lot of unique colors this year that I've seen for fall stuff. Are you guys sticking with traditional orange? Like fall colors, like the vibrance. I've seen a, a lot of jewel tones that are really pretty. And I actually think that um, blue and orange is a really powerful combination. So if you wanted to go bold, that those are complementary colors. And I've seen some really cool um, displays with those. If you're creative like me, do you love Instagram? I feel like, I mean, I like Pinterest and I like Facebook. Okay, but Instagram is like, I have FOMO or something like I'm fear of missing out of a cute house or something. <laughs> I'm always like, oh, that's so pretty. That's so pretty. Everyone lives in a pretty house. <laughs> Jamie says she's pretty traditional. Oh, Kelsey says she has grays, whites, and blues with a little bit of orange. I do. I like that. This one's farmhousey, Kelsey. So I have even seen a lot of um, blush or like really pale pink. Hang on, one of my dogs needs in and the other dog's telling me. Hold on, we'll let some paint dry. Thank you. I'm so sorry guys, I'm the only one home. <laughs> this happens to me every time. They just lose their minds when I'm the only one home. <laughs> So Kara's on here is Junk to Jewel. So if you see commenting, I'm not typing magically. Uh, so that's Kara. So she can probably answer some questions too. Um, she's supposed to be packing because she's going out of town this weekend. But we have um, a Santini Blue from Sherwin-Williams. That really is pretty, um, I'm not sure if it's like quite like denim blue. Like it's not super saturated navy or anything like that. But it's a really pretty blue. And I've noticed a little bit of um, transition away from maybe aquas to more of those blues. Oh, Michelle says copper. Love that for fall. So cute. But I think I was talking about the blushes and mauves and that kind of thing. So I've seen those in weddings and such, and um, those seem to be popping up for fall. So I did pick up some stems that are those colors, so I may work on some projects with that. And I'm actually going to do this um, two-sided, okay? So this box is going to have some words on one side and words on the other. I'm going to show two different techniques. I'm going to show you, like, if you have, if you make stencils at all, if you have a Cricut or a Silhouette, um, or you could find words from Hobby Lobby and that kind of thing, or little letters or initials to put on your box. You could totally leave it plain and beat it up and have it rustic or um, whatever you would like. Um, but I'm going to put a, basically a negative on one side, so I need to apply that before I apply my paint. So we're going to do that. I have one side that's still just stained on my thing, on my centerpiece box. <laughs> Hi, Mackenzie. I see Mackenzie popping in. Are you decorating for fall, Mackenzie? And then Mackenzie has a new apartment. So she may be getting out the fall decor. <laughs> oh, goodness. Okay. So I want to see what you, um, you can see what I mean about this is the negative. <laughs> There's a dog hair on it. You can see that. Oh, sorry, my life. I did get a Roomba, though. It's going to change everything, I feel like. Um, I'm going to stick this on, and then I'm going to paint over it, and then I'm going to pull the, the stencil off, okay? This is all the technical side of everything. And I think I'm going to put this one over to kind of one side. 
And these are the stencils used in class. This is basically a negative, um, so it would be opposite of what you do in one of our workshops if you were able to come there. Which, like I said, if you're crafty and you do stuff at home, I don't have all my tools here. Hang on. Well, I'm going to make it stay on there, I guess. Usually I use a card or something to really press it down, but um, I don't have one at my table. Right now I'm crafting at my dining room table. I'm ready to take down all my lemony, summery stuff and get this fall decor going. Um, I've actually got a few projects in mind to show you all. Um, I went to um, Pier 1 the other day, and they have these really cute chargers. I feel like the whole natural bringing the outside in is really popular. But they had these chargers that were like grapevine with like greenery in them, almost moss looking. Does my camera keep getting fuzzy? I feel like my face is getting fuzzy. Um, but they had a lot of placements or chargers, like round ones, that were either leaves or... Um, the greenery in the vines and stuff like that, but they were twenty dollars each, and I was like, "If you guys are like me, you're crafty. You're like, oh, I can make that at home, right?" <laughs> so I'm really gonna see if I can get the supplies to do that at home. I I thought they were really cute, and you could totally put um like a fall leaf around them. I'll, I'll have to post pictures. It's hard to explain, but they're around with the grapevine, and then around your plates would be like some greenery poking out, like the pretty laurels and that kind of thing. Um, so anyway. I thought those were really cute. That would be a way to bring in a natural element to your tablescape. Target dollar spot on point, y'all. So I already got my stuff, so you guys can go. <laughs> Get what you have at um, Target dollar spot. And they have, I mean, from picks to table runners to napkins. I got some really cute blue, um, like, plaid napkins and stuff. So I was excited about that. Okay, so I'm painting right over top of my stencil on this one. And so that word is going to actually be in the stain that's underneath. So that's kind of cool. Cool way to do it. It's going to have multi-purpose or whatever side of the table that people sit on, they will have something cute to look at. <laughs> so <laughs> Cassie wants to see the placemats <laughs> or the chargers, Cassie. Is that what you want to see? Or my plaid. Somebody else uh, was telling me they or posted on their Instagram that they got the plaid runner and I was like I got it too. Yeah Target is always like it's like they're very good at trends and stuff like that so they're apparently predicting navy for fall because that's what it was. Okay like I said I am just like barely putting a coat on here it's not full coverage or anything like that. I'm just kind of sweeping on. I do want to make sure my word's going to be legible so I want to put kind of heavier coverage around there. Okay. Um, goodness. So you guys have any fall projects you'd like to see me tackle? If you want to try any pins that you're or you're wanting to do. Like I said, I want to do some tablescape stuff because I have a plan there. Um, we've been working on my new breakfast nook and now my husband had to go out of town. So it's going to build me some shelves and stuff and I thought it would be fun to just set those up. Um, really cute as decorated for fall as well so I don't know when I'll be home but that's on my crafty to-do list it's never ending uh, okay again I'm gonna leave the inside just stained since we're gonna fill it with stuff I've got that side painted I'm gonna flip it around and work on that other side let's see if it's dry ish Ugh. and not gonna paint by myself oh I think it's pretty dry okay Cool. That's why I use the chalk paint. The BB Froche is just the best, y'all. Like, we sell it on our website, but we sell it because it is amazing. So, um, I know a lot of people have used chalk paints or tried different chalk paints, um, but this is actually a powder. It's a chalk additive that you put in any paint that you want to use. So, for me, it's really more cost effective because I can mix up just a little thing at once, or I'll do like a mason jar. I can do a ton of projects with this. So, um, but it is great. Okay. I don't even have sandpaper. Usually I like try to sand it and prepare my wood, but we're just going for it. And then I'm going to put this on, and then um, I think I'm going to do, let's see if I have some black paint. I think I'm going to just do black for this. Um, and then I'm going to chalk paint on some pumpkins. I've got a variety of pumpkins here. I've been hoarding them a little bit. <laughs> 
doesn't seem like so bad when I just pick up a pumpkin here, or a pumpkin there. Or like I said, I, I just love it when the seasons change. It just feels fresh. I like to do the decor changes, and I love going in the store and see when it changes. Apparel, right? I love fall clothes the best. Like the little booties and all that. Okay, and this one says, hopefully you guys can read it. It says, Autumn Blessings, Thankful and Grateful. So I thought that would be cute all the way through until I put up Christmas stuff, right? So I'm just going to center this on there. How many crafty ladies we got on here? Um, Amy's asking the name of the, the stuff I put in the chalk paint. Um, it's called BB Froche. It's chalk paint powder. So if you go to our website and go to the shopping area, um, there's a couple different sizes, I think, available. We carry their waxes and their brushes and stuff, but um, if really if you just get the powder and have it on hand, you can mix it with um, any sort of acrylics. It's best with flat paint if you like the chalky finish, okay? Hi, Shana. Is it Shana or Shanna? I guess I don't know how. You can't, <laughs> can't tell me verbally on there. Um, but, okay, I'm hoping this is centered. I'm an eyeballer. Again, this impatient crafter side of me is going to knit me one of these days. I'm going to just... I'm just literally measuring with my fingers, y'all. Hoping it's in the center. I just think nobody that comes over my house, they love me already. They're not going to judge me if my paint is crooked, right? <laughs> um, Colleen, what does she say? She says, I love fall. I have a fall read she made, and she's waiting for it to go up. Well, it's September 1st, Colleen. Go for it. <laughs> I'm saying go for it. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, so I'm peeling off my transfer tape. I know this is probably not the most interesting part to watch, but I promise when we get to the decorating, it's going to be really fun. <laughs> but I'd love to hear you, what you guys are doing for fall. Jessica says it's her favorite. It really is one of my one of my favorite decorating seasons. Sir. I probably would say it's my favorite, and then until Christmas gets here, I'm like, oh, but then I love Christmas. I love that fall is a whole season like of decorating, and I feel like it. Um, you could – have it more so than like a single day worth of decorating. Does that make sense? I think I like it that way. Okay. So I said I was going to find some black paint. Let's see. Hang on. Momentary. I got it. So Kara does a lot of the videos with me. She's probably watching. She said she's driving to Fort Smith. Her daughter is doing a Irish dance competition. Maybe her son is too this weekend. Um, so she, you'll may see her on here as John to Jules. <laughs> She's probably laughing at how unorganized I am. She's the one who keeps me on top of everything, y'all. <laughs> like, bless her heart for trying to keep me organized and this creativity focused, okay? <laughs> but uh, she sees me looking for paint. She's like, oh, geez, girl, get your stuff together. <laughs> um, James says, what kind of vinyl do you use? So we use a stencil vinyl. Um, it's by Aura Mask. I think it's 831. Um, so I do get asked that question a lot, but um, I will try to post it um, on here for you. So this blue stuff is is that. So it's just made to be um, to put on and paint it and then peel up, not like a, how you would apply vinyl to like say a cup or something like that. Does that make sense? Okay, and I'm just dabbing. I use really thin coats of paint. Well, you're supposed to use really thin coats of paint. It is pretty thin. Um, and I've got my little stencil here, and I designed this to fit. Um, on here, we do a lot of custom stencils, so if there's anything you want something to say, your box to say, we could do that in a workshop for you, or, um, I'm planning to make some of these to take to Vintage Market Days that is coming up in October. Um, we're changing up kind of how we're doing custom orders, I don't know how many of you are local or somehow I always get questions about, can I get one, how do I get one of my own, um, because we're a little overwhelmed with the custom orders, we're going to kind of be changing that up. It's always been something that um, we've just kind of worked with each person as they ask, and then we'll make whatever they, they need. Um, a lot of times that just becomes really time consuming for us, so I think we're going to open up a certain number of custom order spots each month, or like when we have time, like we might not have any time in December because we've been doing so many workshops and such. Um, but then basically, like, you would reserve your spot for your custom, and then we would work with you to fulfill that. So for those of you that are looking for custom orders, Kara actually handles that. Um, and her email is Kara, K-A-R-A, at jumptojewels.com. Uh, so we do make any of the things that are in our workshops. Like, if you don't live here, um, we can make them and, and ship them to you. Um, also, if you live here and you just don't have time to get into workshop, we do that. 
So if you want to get your hands on something like this or uh, one of our cute door hangers or signs that you've seen, um, you can email her. And like I said, we may just be re kind of configuring how we're doing um, custom orders. So I need to get a drink. I'm doing a lot of talking. Kara's saying it's or a mask, yeah. Glenda's asking again what the sense list, so that's maybe what Kara's asking. Um, and I, I believe you could use this with a silhouette or a Cricut type machine too. I mean, it's just like vinyl type stuff. So, okay. I've got like, I think we're ready for the big reveal. This is my favorite part when you get to like see if it turned out. And I always hope on lives. Maybe it should be stressful, but I'm too excited to see how it looks, y'all. Okay. Looks pretty good. Okay, so I'm just peeling off the, the big parts right now. Ooh, do you guys see? Ah, give me some hearts. Are you guys excited to see what it looks like? Okay, I'm going to use this little tool to pick out the little centers of letters and bits and pieces of the stencil vinyl that's still on there. You can use your fingernails too, but I had a lot of little letters today. Little letters and pieces. Does anybody know when Starbucks starts selling their pumpkin spice latte? I feel like that's like official fall for a lot of people, right? When you can get the pumpkin spice. We actually had a request for a um, door hanger with the pumpkin spice. Like it was, um, it's like a coffee, not a mug, like the Starbucks cup basically with with a uh, whipped cream and it says like pumpkin spice season or pumpkin spice everything. And I think that would be really fun to do. Glenn is asking if I cut it out with a silhouette. We have um, an industrial cutting machine, but it's like the same technology as a silhouette, Glenda. Um, I'll say it's on steroids. <laughs> it's huge. Oh, goodness. Um, I did. I don't know if you guys saw the last video I did. I think it, I think it was the last video I did. I was talking about Chalk Couture, which is um, reusable vinyls that are already cut for you. And um, that's really cool. If you don't have a silhouette or a Cricut machine, you can purchase the, this, the stencils. And I've done some projects with them. They're amazing. The technology is crazy. Um, but you wouldn't have the ability to size it to the project. Now, they do have... Um, from everywhere from little to big pieces and so I'll be doing more demos of their product um, and I can even drop in the link for the chalk couture so that would be a way to play with it even or if you'd want to make some signs you can do it on fabric anything like that so let's see this cute guy do you guys love that I'm excited yeah this is totally staying at my house y'all <laughs> Reagan says she thinks they already started um, Selling the pumpkin spice lattes. Yay. I actually like iced coffee a little better than pumpkin spice lattes, but I'm drinking Monster at 8 o'clock at night, so. <laughs> hmm. I haven't tried the contact paper, Glenda, but that doesn't sound like it would be easy. Um, okay, so let's, I'm going to paint a few pumpkins so they can dry while we're working on our filling of the thing. How does that sound? Oh, I'll pull off this stencil, too. Sorry. Like I said, this is kind of, this is live. We're just, we're hanging out, crafting. I was going to do it anyway, and I thought I would just have y'all join me. Yeah? Oh, this looks nice. Okay, so now this side is painted and it's raised black. Okay, so I can feel like kind of the texture of the letters. And you could do any color. Like, I just stuck with the neutral, but it could be like whatever accent color. It would be cute with an orange and a different color for the autumn blessings, you know, the lines of text. Hope they spelled right. A lot of times I do this and I'm like, flip, somebody told me I got a spelling error. <laughs> and then this one is recessed where this, the gathers and the stain. So I'm not sure you can tell it on the, if you're watching on your phone and stuff, but that's kind of two different techniques for stenciling. Um, so I just wanted to show you that. If you're into learning more about stenciling, another fun thing to do, um, or if you're crafty, would be to get into our Creative Crates group, which is monthly. We send a kit to you, and we DIY the projects together. It's nothing we offer in workshops or anything like that, but, like, this month they got um, three different stencils, and they did it. They stenciled on tea towels, and I think um, 
a sign or a little uh, pedestal or riser for their kitchen. Um, but we've done signs and different things like that. So you get really comfortable with the stenciling and the different paint techniques and how to achieve the paint looks that you like. So um, that's a really fun way to do it, Glenda, if you're interested in that. So I got vinyl on my boob. Okay. I said I'm going to paint pumpkins. That's what we're moving on to, ladies. Okay. So I have been picking up pumpkins everywhere I've been. Let me, is that better? Can you see? Okay. Um, so some I got at Walmart. These ones are like 98 cents at Walmart. And I'm not going to do orange this year. I'm going to do all like neutrals, pales, blues, greens, creams. So this creamy one will probably be okay. Um, and these are the ugly ones that I got at Dollar Tree that we're going to try to chalk paint. They literally are glowing neon. <laughs> really ugly but I think mixed in with other pumpkins it won't look like it's a Dollar Tree pumpkin okay <laughs> and um I my friend Brittany at Certified Celebrator she's the one who told me about these turned me on to these so I had to like divert my husband off the road when we saw a Dollar Tree the other day when we were out of town to to buy these so everything is just one dollar in there <laughs> and okay so I got some gourds too so these are some of the ones I got at Walmart I kind of got a collection going the other thing, I mean, some of these I'm not going to paint. Look at this blue velvet pumpkin. It is so beautiful. <laughs> I love it. I, I love velvet anything. I'm just saying. I'm an early adopter of trends, and I was, like, wanting velvet shoes last year, and now I've seen velvet shoes everywhere. Have you seen <laughs> velvet shoes and velvet dresses and velvet tops? And This is one that I had that's kind of farmhousey, so that will work with my stuff. Um, I got some picks. This was at Hobby Lobby. So this is kind of farmhousey. There's some cotton and pine cones. So this is totally the vibe I want to do at my house. So if this is this is that what I want it to look like. I found this one that's kind of like a wood wash, like really old and worn. That was at Hobby Lobby as well. Their fall stuff is half off this week. I don't know if it is every week. I know some sections seem to stay 40% off or whatever, but it was 40% off this week. So that was only $2 or something. And this is another find at Hobby Lobby. It's like birch, and they had them all in different sizes. So what I like to do is buy some of the faux ones that I can reuse year after year and mix those in with um, the pumpkins that I buy at the, the pumpkin patch. So, um, that was good. Walmart also had these, I think it was Walmart, or no, this might have been Dollar Tree too. This is like a little burlap pumpkin. Look, at, I'm just pulling them out of a bucket and I've got all these pumpkins. We've got lots of options. This is a taller Target dollar spot. So they had some greens and, um, bluish greens and aquas. So that's really cute too. So these are options as is I can use, but I'm going to paint some of these orange ones that don't quite match. So. Let's go with that, huh? Whoop. Okay. So I've got about four pumpkins I need to paint. I'm going to do, I already have the white, so let's do the white, and maybe I can add a little brown to it so it's not, like, crispy white. Um, I'm not seeing contacts. Will you guys let me know? Or not contacts. Um, comments right now. So give me a heart or something. Let me know if you're there, y'all. Sometimes Facebook Live is funny. It does seem like halfway through, then I lose the ability to see what you're saying to me, <laughs> which is fun to interact and hear your questions, but we will wing it no matter what, right? Okay, so I mixed kind of a lot of brown in there. <laughs> oh, okay, I'm seeing your thumbs up and your heart, so thank you for letting me know you're there. And we're just going to go to town on these foam pumpkins and hope they don't look like they costed a dollar. <laughs> Oh yeah, it covers pretty good. Um, one note on this, like spray painting is not my thing because I'm not patient enough to get thin, even coats on things. <laughs> but you can't really spray paint like styrofoam, styrofoam or something like this. It tends to eat up any sort of like plastic or stuff like that. I know because I've tried. <laughs> so have y'all tried that? <laughs> Tell me I'm not the only one. I don't know. Too many chemicals in that spray paint. Although I've even seen um, chalky spray paint like at Lowe's and stuff. I haven't tried it, but I don't know. So this has kind of made a good brown taupey color that I think will go in my mix of pumpkins. I 
I figured for a dollar it's worth the risk, right? I'm trying it. If it failed, it's not like I'm painting something real extensive or anything like that. Okay. I have a piece of paper right up. I'm going to set it on that. I don't uh, have even a cardboard piece down tonight on the table. So. And I might, I'm probably will paint the stem, the stem brown, but we'll just leave that guy for now. Um, I think I'm gonna, I don't know, do you guys like the cream? I'm going to do a little bit of dry brushing on this guy because he's kind of a little bit yellowy. Okay. This should dry pretty darn quick for us. Okay. I wish I could see these darn stencils or these darn comments. I'm sorry. Hmm. Anyway. Okay. I'm going to just assume you're there, y'all. <laughs> oh, goodness. This jar is a little sealed up. Okay, so I have kind of this other chalk color that I had mixed up. It might be a little too bright for what I'm going for, so I'm just going to mix in this other paint. This is, um, oh, it's really pretty, like a minty green, but it doesn't have the chalk in it. So I'm not sure how it will stick, so I'm just going to kind of mix those together. <laughs> There we go. Okay, so I'm taking this orange pumpkin so it'll fit into my decor. And I think it would be nice to do even, like, if you get the base coat on of the chalk, then that'll pretty much seal whatever you put on top of it um, to stay on there. You know, the chalk paint basically is you, will stick to any surface, um, from glass to fabric to metal. Um, so if I get that first layer of chalk paint on there, then I could go back and accent with my, like, regular paint. Um, so I may do that, like in the ridges and stuff, I can put like a darker color for some contrast. We'll make our faux pumpkins look a little realer. More realistic, I guess, is the word. <laughs> uh, so, we are working on making the cutest fall centerpiece, y'all. I'm excited. Okay. We've got three down. I think this one's good. I could, here, I'll just, a little bit of the blue color. How about that? Look on the top, is that cute? I'm willing to try and experiment, right, with my dollar pumpkins. I think that's kind of fun. I saw some that were kind of like gold dipped like this. So if you love like sparkly or glittery, so cute. I'm going to kind of leave it like that. <laughs> Okie doke. Now I've got my other big pumpkin. Should I do it cream again? Hmm. I feel like I'm going to do a blue on the base and then maybe put some cream on it. I'm going to go with that one. So I have two that are the same size but different colors. I want some options when I get to my actually filling up my centerpiece. So... Okay, it's going pretty quick and drying, so that's nice. I'm actually going to go over to my grandma's this weekend, and uh, I'm going to take some fall crafting stuff over to her house so we can craft together. We'll see what we work on. I have, um, like I said, I have all these tablescape pins that I've pinned or inspira as inspiration or ideas for different things um, to go with what I'm putting together for my house. It'll be fun to take them over and craft with her. She's kind of where I get my, I don't know if crafty is the gene, but <laughs> she uh, used to own a gift store. And I, one of the things I remember, she can wrap a present in under 60 seconds and probably make the bow and attach it too. Like she makes a bow, like doesn't even have to look at her fingers. And it's, it's an art, people. <laughs> so 
but she sews. And when I was younger, we used to come stay with her in the summer. And I remember her sewing me and my sister like little rompers, and they would have like the scrunchie on the corners uh, around the sleeves. Do you guys remember those? Did you have those? I don't know. We thought it was so cool. And we lived where we lived. They didn't really have Walmart, so we loved to come to Arkansas to visit Grandma and um, go to Walmart. <laughs> But uh, then we moved here, and Walmart's not. Oh my God, I have to go to freaking Walmart. <laughs> so love Walmart. <laughs> Just saying, but when you have to go three times a week, it's not quite as exciting as when you don't live where there's a Walmart, right? Um, but okay, so I'm letting these kind of dry. Let me see if I can move them over so we can fill our box here. The logistics of crafting in front of the camera is not. <laughs> So easy. We have our big old shop. If you guys have been to classes at our workshop, and um, we have probably a dozen tables, and uh, we still manage to fill like every surface there is to possibly work on. And like, it's a fight to find places to like weed stencils or lay out a bunch of things to work on. So kind of funny. No matter how much space you have, kind of like when you move into a bigger house, you think, how am I ever going to fill this up? And then you're busting at the seams. <laughs> so. I think I was saying I'm crafting in my dining room today and I would love to have a space in our house. I need to figure out what, um, how I can steal some space from somewhere else so I can have a designated craft place so I can do this with y'all more often if you would like that. Um, okay. I'm moving all my paints. We're going to get our centerpiece and talk about that. Okay. So, I think what I'm going to do, can you guys see okay? We're seeing okay? Okay, right. so I'm going to talk about the next set of things that I got to go in my centerpiece. Y'all would like that. And, hang on. <laughs> I feel like I need music because I can't even see your comments. I'm so sorry. Okay, so one of the things that is so farmhouse is Magnolia, right? Have you, has anybody been to, to Texas to go to Joanna Gaines Magnolia? The silos? <laughs> That's on my bucket list. Me and Kara are going to Texas, Dallas for the Pin Pinners Conference in Dallas. And I'm, I don't know if we could figure out a detour in there to, to go down there. And we'll see. I know that there's um the whole state down there. I, you know, I haven't kept up with a lot of what's going on there because it makes me so sad. And they've been definitely in our thoughts and prayers a lot. I just... I get overwhelmed by the news, um, negative and sad, and I just know that they're hurting and suffering, and a lot of people are, and so, and I even posted something on our page the other day that um, Chip and Joanna have a shirt that uh, says Texas Forever, and all the proceeds from that go to help flood victims, um, or Hurricane Harvey victims, and support that they need, and I've seen a lot of their handmade shops, too, pop up where you, um, they're giving proceeds, and, and things to that great cause. So absolutely help out if you can. And I know Red Cross is a great one to text. I don't know their number off the top of my head, but I know there's a number you can text and um, send $10. So if you can do that, whether you can help by donating or praying or being there for somebody um, who's in that situation in need. I, you know, we live in an awesome country and, and if we can support each other in that time of need, that's, that's awesome. So um, Anyway, I don't want to be insensitive to that, but we're, we're decorating tonight, but they've certainly been, I know, I feel like the whole, um, everyone I've talked to, it's just been kind of a gloomy week, you know, so hopefully we can be a bright spot, and um, if decorating your house makes you happy and helps you find a little bit of joy, um, I'm about finding more of that in your day, okay? So, these, and Magnolia, we've started that whole riff there. Um, so, I've got these Magnolia leaves. And there, this is just a garland, and it happened to be, like, perfect length to fit in my trough. Um, so this is 36 inches long, so three feet long. And I'm just going to put that down in there as, like, the base filler, okay? And this is what I was talking about. Like, every day, if I do this with a little bit of cotton, y'all, like, this is so farmhouse, so cute. I mean, that's all. That's all you need. <laughs> and I... Ugh. Got some tags on things. So I would just stick, you know, if you have just a plain trough and wanted to stick in a few pieces of cotton and some magnolia leaves or a magnolia garland, this would just be the cutest centerpiece, and you can leave this up. Okay. 
but we're gonna go a step further. <laughs> okay, so for fall, I have, do you know what I got to? Hmm. I found these antlers, what are they, sheds? Yeah, oh, sheds. Um, <laughs> I'm such a dork. You all are like, ah. Um, at Hobby Lobby in the Christmas section, actually. So I thought these would be fun to incorporate because I know hunting season starts. I don't hunt, but I know that, like, my uncle's usually gone on Thanksgiving because he's hunting. So that's totally this season and this vibe. And I thought that's another natural element we could mix in to incorporate in this cute centerpiece box. So um, I'm going to do that. And then I found these at Hobby Lobby. And then I also found at Walmart... This is like a commercial for Walmart, I promise. I'm not, or Hobby Lobby. <laughs> I have no affiliation. Just, I love to go there. Um, but if we could just stick some of these in there. But Walmart had a couple too. Theirs didn't have the stem, them, the, like the picks. Um, or if you have a hunter or you have a yard where you find sheds. I have some sheds that I've collected. I've probably bought most of mine. Um, but they were too large for this project. So I kind of like these. These were literally, yeah, $1.34 at Walmart. So if your Walmart has these sheds, that, that works too. So the little picks are nice because it helps it stand up. Also, if whatever's putting in your you're putting in your trough or your centerpiece box, um, if you need some more structure, you could always fill the bottom with like pine cones or you could use floral foam or something like that. I think this just lays in here fine. Um, but you know, if you have, depending on what you put in there, sometimes you might need like a filler in the, the base, if that makes sense. So I'm going to put these little sheds in. I'm kind of putting them more at the ends. I know you guys can't see the ends super well. How many do I want? <laughs> yes, that'll be the thing. I'm kind of, I tend to be a more is more girl. <laughs> like I just keep adding and adding, but simplicity is farmhouse and I'm trying to embrace that. So I'm still loving this. That would be it's so cute. And I have these little stems that I showed you earlier that have the pine cone and the, the different things. So you can kind of fluff that up, and that would be something we could lay in there. This is just playing, but I want you to see the different elements that you could collect kind of when you're out in the stores, what you should look for to fill your box. So, and then let's see if our little pumpkins. Oh, that one got a little stuff on it. I'm waiting for some of ours to dry. Our chalk paint pumpkins aren't quite dry, so we'll we'll see. But I could totally use some of the other little pumpkins. Or if you have, like I said, the pine cones or anything like that. This is just the cutest, you guys. I mean, I'm just making it fuller and fuller. I think this guy's too big. I don't know. Depends on how big you want your thing to be. How bountiful, like overflowing. Does that make sense? You guys liking it? Can you see that set? I think I need a little leaf or something down there. Um, I've got some other picks that I liked. Y'all have Michaels too. I love the picks that they have. So. I see your little heart. So you guys gonna go buy picks tomorrow and to make your little <laughs> boxes, huh? We'll see. I'm actually gonna snip this if I can. I don't have cutters. Maybe I can tear it off. I want to use just the leaves, I think, down in this corner and save this little pear or gourd thing for somewhere else. So I'm kind of just filling in a little spot. Like, let's look at this corner, you guys. No. Okay, so I want to make sure mine looks good from both sides because it's going to be the centerpiece of my table. So you just kind of do want it coming over the top. You want to make sure that you have leaves poking out, filling it to just be full. This looks so expensive, and most of these pumpkins I put in here when I need scents. So one garland, probably um, like a, a stem of cotton you could get away with, and a few antlers, and you're having a piece that is looking really expensive like people paid a lot of money for these centerpieces right <laughs> like if you had a designer or a floral shop or somebody else come in and do it for you and it has much of a farmhouse bad and I think if you wanted to do like I said the magnolias 
and the cotton. Um, and then when you're ready for, for fall, just incorporate the pumpkins. That's really fun. Like kind of pregame, like I'm ready to take down my lemons and stuff just so I could put out some of this more neutral items and then add the pumpkins when I'm, when I'm ready to go full on fall. Is that, I don't know. This little guy might be too big. He's kind of a big guy in the middle. There's no planning this part out. I just kind of, uh, what works, what doesn't work. I don't know. I may want to get another one of these like driftwood pumpkins. I really liked how that looks in there. I wasn't sure. Oh, I have this guy too. Okay. I'm getting there. Like I said, you just want it to look full, kind of pull those leaves out. I'm loving this, y'all. We thinking this is cute. Okay, maybe a little more cotton right here. And I think I'm gonna have to wait for some of my chalk paint items to dry before I put them in here. They're still a little sticky. Um, but yeah, that's my little piece. So I'll definitely take some pictures when I get my table all set up and um, I'll probably be on here showing you some more of the items that we're working on. I'll definitely show you the placemats that I think I can make cheaper for than $20 a piece. So I sit six, I can sit for six or eight at my big table. And I was like, Mm, that's a lot of money on a seasonal place mat. So I'm going to make those place mats with the, some grapevine stems and, um, or wreaths and some florals. So that's a fun one. And then, um, if there's anything else you want to, to see me make for fall or, um, do decorate in the house if you have certain parts that are dilemmas to decorate like I'll um I love doing front porch I love decorating um with real pumpkins as well especially outside and as soon as they're there I'll buy some cute pumpkins I might even chalk paint some real pumpkins <laughs> I love that blush color and I I've never seen a real life pumpkin that color so I might have to paint one so but um yeah definitely so go out to the Dollar Tree find some of these styrofoam pumpkins you can paint up and you can be incorporating those into your decor um and mix them with some higher end items and nobody will ever know the difference. So thanks y'all and you have a great Labor Day weekend. Okay. Thanks. <laughs>